we have come through the 40 days of Lent and arrived at the glorious celebration of Easter. I welcome you to this service of the Holy Eucharist during the great 50 days of Easter and invite you to share in the joy of the resurrection. Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed! Alleluia! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you have called us, as you have called those who came before us, into lively and holy ministry in this cathedral parish, to be your light in this corner of the world. In this time of change, send, we pray, your Holy Spirit to comfort and guide us to help us discover who we are and what we may become. As we prepare for a new shepherd of your flock, a minister in your house, grant us patience, discernment, and grace in all our uncertainties, and bless our search for one to lead us as the church you call us to be. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The day after they had arrested Peter and John for teaching about Jesus and the resurrection, the rulers, the elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Anas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, 
rulers of the people and elders. If we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who is sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the cornerstone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired man who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay my life down for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it up from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of the living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Among the most powerful stories from classical Christian literature is this one from John Bunyan's famous allegory, Pilgrim's Progress. As the pilgrim turns to the final difficulty separating him from the end of his journey, the celestial city, he is very much afraid. Before him is a fierce river, its waters raging. He is ready to go back, forsaking the city, settling for the lesser experience from which he once sought escape. His good and faithful companion, 
hopeful, seeing the pilgrim's apprehension, strides forth into the water's tumult. He stretches out his hand and says, Be of good cheer, my brother. I can feel the bottom, and it is sound. Three Sundays ago, we celebrated the great festival of Easter. The greeting at the beginning of this service is a reminder that the Easter experience is not just one day, but rather 50 days in which we rejoice in the hope that the resurrection brings to us. In fact, some would say that the Easter experience is a daily experience, one that we live out each day of our lives with the excitement of the birth of Christ, the sadness of his death, and the joy that the resurrection brings. And if you think about it in that context, the story of Christ is the story of our human existence, with the excitement, the sadness, and the joy that comes with daily living. In the collects, lessons, and gospel readings throughout the Easter season, the Church puts us in touch with the men and women who experienced the resurrected Christ in order to deepen our appreciation and understanding of our faith. Thus, we are reminded that after the resurrection event, the disciples began to realize that even though Jesus was no longer with them in human form, his memory and his spirit were still very much alive in their hearts and minds. And they further realized that for the brief time he did live and walk among them, he had, by word and example, set the stage for how they would carry on his work, and by extinction, how future generations would carry on his work. In today's collect, you heard the words, O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when you hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. This serves as a reminder that his presence is never far from us as we move through our daily experiences. Today's passage from the Gospel of John expands on the metaphor of Christ as the shepherd and we as his sheep. Never satisfied with who we are or what we have, always wanting something more or something newer. These verses from John make it quite clear that as the Good Shepherd, Christ misses us when we wander, waits for us when we loiter, seeks us when we stray and lose our way until he finds us. The importance of all of this to us more than 2,000 years removed from the life of Jesus is that even though the world has changed dramatically since that first Easter season, our human condition seems to have remained pretty much the same. The poor and homeless among us continue to be marginalized by society, and humankind continues to struggle with the personal problems and feel overwhelmed at times. Yes, the Easter message is still with us, for Easter is about people like each one of us, accepting and having concern for one another and being happy about life as we go about living it. 
as we do our jobs, say our prayers, offer our help, dedicate our lives, each day can have meaning and the future can be faced with hope and courage. For Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Rejoice in the, in the mighty acts of God who has delivered his people from sin and death through the resurrection of Jesus Christ in whom light triumphs over darkness and hope triumphs over despair. Let us lift our voices and pray, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church that it may carry forward the redemptive work of God, healing, feeding, sheltering, and caring for one another. We pray especially for Michael, presiding bishop, Brian, our bishop, the clergy, staff, and the many lay people who serve this cathedral parish. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the nations and peoples of the world. We pray especially for our president, our governor, our male, and all those who hold authority throughout the world, that the powers that oppress and destroy may decline and justice, peace, and prosperity be lifted up for all people. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are sick, those who suffer, and those who struggle with the hope born of Easter. Give them peace, acceptance, and renewal. And through their struggles, may they come into closer communion with God who redeems and restores. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who have died, especially from the coronavirus. Let rest eternal be given to them, and may they live forever in the hearts of their families. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us give thanks to God for the multitude of blessings he showers upon us, for our lives and for those whom we love, for our friendships and for our cathedral home. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us confess our sins against God, our neighbor, and ourselves. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. I greet you in the name of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And now offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
Our service continues with the great thanksgiving. We offer this Eucharist to the glory of God in thanksgiving for the coming of Christ into our lives and into the life of the world. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, 
we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever amen And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. These are the gifts of God for you the people of God. In union, O Lord, with your faithful at every altar of the Church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. Since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you, and you in us, in this life, and in the life to come. Amen. The prayer of thanksgiving, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you, 
with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Eucharist is ended. Therefore I bid you, be of good cheer. Hold fast to that which is good. Love and serve the Lord with gladness and singleness of heart, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. And the blessings of God the Father who created us, God the Son who died for us, and God the Holy Spirit who enlivens and makes us whole, be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.